Hi everyone and welcome back. NBA owners and their basketball players union continue to battle. The owners came up with the ultimate, a 49-51 brand proposal, which is in favor of the owners. There will be a compromise on the luxury tax proposal. Unfortunately, certain teams could suffer because some teams bring in more money than others. There is a no sign, no trade for tax players. This offer stays on the table until normal business hours on Wednesday. Derek Fisher, the head of the Players Association, responded to this ultimate with this quote in response. But right now, you know, we've been given the ultimate. And our answer is, that's not acceptable to us. Not only do we turn the back on the clocks this weekend, but it opens season on bas baseball free agents. The biggest name that is now free to receive offers from any club is World Series champ first baseman Albert Pujols. The best hitter of the decade is now 31 years old, and his best years may be behind him. That still won't stop a team from offering him $100 million. Another player expected to command that kind of deal is Brewer Slugger Prince Fielder. The 27-year-old is coming off his best year, and he significantly cut down on his strike at ratio to walks. Fielder has 230 runs in the first seven years of his pro career, and is expected to sign a contract for another seven-year $156 million. The third big name out there is Jose Reyes of the Mets. The 28-year-old hit 337 last season and has speed up at was plays solid defense. So what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about those three uh, key free agents right there? Uh, I don't know, guys. Um, what do you guys think of uh, free agents there? Well, Albert Pujols, I don't see him going anywhere else but the Cardinals. They need him back for another championship season. There's, uh, they can't uh, play without him. Prince Fielder, on the other hand, although, uh, although a lot of teams, I think, would look at him, I think the Brewers are going to resign him. Um, I think they, want, they got so close last year, uh, this year, that they're not going to want to give him away. Jose Reyes, I think, uh, although the Red Sox probably do not have the money to bring in Jose Reyes, I definitely think that Jose Reyes would be a good guy to bring in to the Sox. They do not have a good shortstop uh, in forever. And it would be a good, uh, he would be an all around player that the Red Sox could use. Okay, new question. What do you think the new manager oh. um, will bring to this team? What, what will be the, their new look? Um, I think it's going to be more of a like, hard run organization, and they'll make a more, hopefully, less of a, we'll just throw money around, and hopefully, less of a Yankees type organization. And they'll try to have a new way of what it means to be a Red Sox what it means to be in Boston. And they'll try to get players that'll fit the build more instead of just throwing the money around. All right, let's. Oh, and also, I remember you told me that the Red Sox should uh, get C.J. Wilson. Yeah, seems to be a great pitcher. He's relatively young, and he just had his first playoff experience. I know he looked shaky, but I think they need someone to replace John Lackey, who's getting Tommy John surgery, and I think he'd be a great fit. I definitely think Edwin Jackson should be a better fit for the Sox. C.J. Wilson a little shaky. Edwin Jackson's my guy to go. All right, um, all right. Let's now go back to let's go back to Sam. Sam. All right, thanks, guys. Well, I'd be a reporter. Nick Englander is in studio to discuss ESPN's compelling story of former BC Eagles player Chris Heron. I would come into the arena playing against Texas or UMass. You know, 12 o'clock noon. And I'd be in a car with two girls that I had no idea their names, and I hadn't slept yet, and I'm doing my last line of cocaine as I'm walking into the arena. And, and I hadn't ate anything, I haven't done anything, and the last thing I drank was a Budweiser. My junior season, UMass was coming back for revenge at Fresno. I was out the whole night before. I think it was like a 4 o'clock game. He called me at like... He called me at like 7.30 in the morning. And I know it was high as a kite. And I'm like, you got a f***ing game on national television, man, against UMass. Down on the front court, working against Mack. Takes it inside, space for the free. And uh, he played great. had a sensational game, and our arena was rocking. Our fans were really into it. 
Big victory here for the Bulldogs tonight over UMass and a personal win for Chris Harris. And that happened on like that on a Saturday night. And Monday afternoon we were in the office and our compliance guy came up and told me Chris tested positive. Well, that basically describes Chris Heron's life. I'm Nick Englander from YBA Sports, and today I'm talking about the documentary Unguarded from ESPN Films. It's about, about a local basketball player named Chris Heron, who was from Fall River. He was nationally recruited by basically every school. He went to Boston College to stay local. However, after that, his career was basically a bunch of almost was. Going to BC, he started, everybody was saying him, Allen Iverson, Felipe Lopez, and Ray Allen were going to bring the Big East back to be the pinnacle of all the big conferences. Now, Heron, in his first game, broke his wrist, and then, about a few months later, was introduced to cocaine. This would lead him on a complete downward spiral, and he left BC. However, he get, was given a second chance by Fresno State. He went there, was a star there. However, he once again spiraled down the drain again after he got re-addicted to cocaine. He tested positive multiple times. This documentary showed Chris Heron's life in a way of how he spoke to people, how he spoke to local players, how he spoke to high schools, how he spoke to the Army. And it's describing how he's not speaking to kids that haven't, you know, been through this before. He's speaking to kids that have. This is one of the best documentaries that ESPN has made. It was one of, first of all, it's very tragic. And also, I'm only reviewing this really because of the local connection. However, big part of this of why I thought it was so good was the fact that it had a lot of, you know, emotion to it. You can kind of feel what he was going through when he was on drugs and people were from the stands were, you know, clamoring at him clamoring him like, hey, you're awful, drug addict, whatever. But I think ESPN did a really good job as usual, and I think this could be in the top three, maybe with the best I never was, and maybe once brothers. So <laughs> for YBA Sports, I'm Nick Englander. Like the curse of the Bambino, there's a long-standing belief that whoever graces the cover of Madden is cursed for the next year. It's called the Madden curse. It's the first time fans are out to vote for who would be there on that cover for the 2012 season. The final two were Peyton Hillis of the Browns and Danny Woodhead of the Patriots. Hillis was excited to be on the cover of Madden 2012, almost as excited he, as he was in Madden form. He is not happy anymore. This season, Hillis has been a draw production and it has been reported that he has been in trouble in the locker room. Runner-up Danny Woodhead has seen a runoff of the curse. He has the only rush for 122 yards this season has yet to find pay dirt. So guys, is this curse real? Um, I don't think it is. Do you guys think it's real? No. No. Okay. This thing, what, will, who will the fans vote? Who is this thing's next victim? I don't know. I think it'll be someone big. Maybe they'll bring back a, they'll try to get, I know they're going to try to get someone like a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning. I don't think it'll happen, but Wrap it up. that's the kind of player they'll go after. You never see like a team player. It's never a team player. It's an individual player who puts up amazing stats. Yeah, sure. And either this curse is basically, it happens so just basically. Just... The, either the player gets hurt, he has a good season, and then let's say trails off, but makes or he's good and he has makes one mistake in the postseason, or he's just bad, and you know he just trails off and he just loses respect and okay. he just vanishes, I guess, from the world of football. All right. All right. I guess that's all. The man curse isn't real. Now let's go back to Sam. Sam? All right, thanks, guys. For Tom, Lyon, and Liam, I'm Sam. Thanks for everyone here at YBA, and we'll see you next week. Go Patriots.